Good morning. Good morning. Oh, more ladylike today. Yeah, you've made an effort. For once. <laughs> I have. Um, so, today's video is um, all about us, actually. Because on Instagram this week, we um, put a story up asking you to... You asked us questions. Yeah, ask us anything. Yeah. So, um, I think we should just get straight into it. And I haven't seen them. I don't know what the questions are. So. I do. So I'm interested to see what your answers are going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first off, thank you to everyone that sent in a question. Um, we had some really good ones actually. So yeah, should we get into it? Yeah. Are they Disney questions or just? Yeah. So I mean, basically the questions were just ask us anything. Um, but predictably, most of them have ended up being Disney okay, questions. Cool. But that's fine. We cool. we like talking about Disney, which you might have gathered by now. Okay. So the first question was, who encouraged your first trip to Orlando? Did you think it would be a once in a lifetime trip? So I went to Orlando with my parents when I was a kid, yeah, um, three times. And um, I think the last time I went, I was about nine or 10 years old um, and absolutely loved it. But honestly, didn't give it that much thought. And then we met when we were 16 and 18 mm -hmm. and um, it just wasn't kind of on our radar then at all. But we went to Disneyland Paris in 2002. Yeah, before that. And, and that was because you wanted to go. I, yeah. At that time, I, did, I, I just thought Disney wasn't for me. I thought Disney was for... Oh, how wrong you were. I thought it was for kids. <laughs> you know, who goes to Disney when you're an adult? <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, we went to... When, when was it? 2002. And we went for your birthday. I think it was like your 23 third birthday something like that so it's the first week of december yeah and we went with your parents yeah and we went on a coach oh that sucked that was real bad really 14 hours from from somerset to disneyland paris on a coach full of small crying children uh, yeah don't do it don't we went with our parents it. at that point so we we didn't have much empathy no, I do now. And we were younger, so it was easier. Yeah. But and, uh, that was back in the day before smartphones. Yeah. And like like four G or five G. Oh, it was. And terrible. iPods. We well, I think maybe the no, first we time we had a... come out, we had this massive, like massive, MP three player. It was like a. Brick. It was huge, but it hardly held anything. And we had like a headphone splitter, so yeah. we had to listen to the same music for twelve hours. Anyway, yeah. um, so we went to Paris quite a few times after that. We had Kai. We took him a bunch of times. But the first time we went to Orlando was in 2012. And again, that was actually with your parents. Yeah. And they were they were actually due to retire. They still haven't retired because they're never going to retire. Um, but they thought they were going to retire and they wanted to take us on a big blowout holiday. And they knew that because we were going to Disneyland Paris quite often, Orlando seemed like the logical choice. And they went and booked it and they didn't even tell us, did they? No. I mean, my, the, the, they they had been before. My dad's in his like, mid to late 70s and still loves roller coasters. He, he wants to go to all the theme parks. He <laughs> loves it. Absolutely loves he it. He loves the Hulk at Universal. Um, so, yeah. So, we kind of didn't know until the last minute. So, it was really cool. Really, really good surprise. Um, and, yeah. So, that was our first trip. And But did we think it... I think... Be, Think about once you've been once you've been to Disney in Orlando once, you just change your priorities to make sure it's not mm. a once in a lifetime event. Yeah. So I think before we'd gone, we were spending money on different things. Me probably on guitars and stuff, and you know we just spend it on just random stuff. But then after twenty twelve, we knew from like just a couple of days in, we're coming back. Yeah. We're coming back next year. Yeah, definitely. In fact, we were, that that trip we spent a week on site and a week off site in a villa um and we, we even went to a dvc meeting on that in that week we did our first dvc <laughs> tour we gave it some serious thought we put the idea to bed for for a while but we we knew we loved it enough to come back and it was quite soon after we got back that we booked again yeah and it i think we booked with free dining so it must have been before those free dining offers wrapped up. So we must have booked like in the October or something. It was straight. We got back and we, yeah, we got yeah. on it and booked. Um, so yeah, it was never going to be once in a lifetime trip. It can't be. It. You can't. It, it no. You change everything. Well, I don't know. Some. But I guess some. If it's for you, and if you're watching this, it's probably for you. <laughs> yeah. Um. You, you do. You change the way you live. You change what you do to make sure you do go back as often as you can. 
Yeah, so all in all, a- any any ideas that it might have been a once-in-a-lifetime trip were very quickly, <laughs> soon after we got there. No. Yeah. Yeah? So that was it, 2012. Next question. When did you realise or learn that each other loves Disney? Well, it, it was probably after that first Paris trip, really, because I don't think, because you, you hadn't gone since you were small. Yeah. And it was never something we discussed. It was on the radar, really. And, Not and too much. So I think for me, it wasn't until we'd gone to, to Paris. And then once I'd gone to Disneyland Paris, and because the first time we went, it, it was on my birthday, but it's, it's in December, so it's, it was Christmas. So to have, ha- having not experienced anything like that before, to then have um, the Christmas music, the the decorations, the, the all that theming and... And the it snow on you, Main Street, it? and it blew me away. Yeah. It, it was it was crazy. It was absolutely phenomenal, and that was it. I, I've never been. I, I've always liked the, the Disney movies, but I was never kind of a huge, you know. I was not, re- you know, an avid watcher of every movie that came out. I still haven't watched all the Disney movies, um, but the theme park, and it, I, I, I don't even like them being called theme parks because I know they are theme parks. They are parks that are themed. But they're not. They are. They are. It's pure escapism. Yeah, they are worlds. You walk into a world. So yeah. yeah. So that was it for me. I walked into that world then, and um, not look back. I tell you what. I think one thing I remember. Um, I remember seeing you on the first day in Disneyland Paris. You saw me see- every day. Yeah. Well, no. Just seeing you in one particular moment um, when we were watching a live performance of Beauty and the Beast. In Fantasyland. Up by the windmill. Um, yeah, yeah. And there was, it had like the fountain from the movie and everything. And yeah. the, the, the like live actors came out and sang the song. And um, even though like most of it was in French and you didn't really understand what was being said, I looked I at you... I speak fluent French. Oh, of course you do. No, you do not. I do. Um, it's a different dialect to what most people know, but it is fluent. Please don't speak French. All right. Um, well, if we have any... French viewers? It doesn't matter. Okay. I, I'm not going to inflict that upon them. Um, anyway... I remember looking at you during that and seeing you kind of get it and, and it really sink in. But I tell you when I really realised how much you loved Disney and how much you loved the theme parks. Because we went that first week in December, when we came back, it was very close to Christmas. Um, and we'd we'd already been married for a couple of years because we got married really young. Um, but we'd never had a Christmas tree or Christmas decorations at Christmas. We just hadn't bothered, which is crazy because I love Christmas. I don't know how that happened. But anyway, after being around all those decorations in Paris... We got home and you were like, right, we're having a Christmas tree. We're getting this, we're getting that. And we went out to a garden centre and just filled our car with Christmas decorations and a massive six foot tree yeah. and um, and just went to town because you just wanted to emulate what we'd seen in Paris. And then, then I knew how much you love the theme park. And then I knew that all Disney does is cost you money, whether <laughs> yeah. you're there or whether you're back home <laughs> right just cost you money next question but it's worth it it's totally worth it okay this is maybe more for me than you Go on in. um do you get your nails etc done before holiday and do you have any beauty tips for florida okay i have beauty tips oh please share well you go first okay I, <laughs> um so i don't want to give them i'm away. possibly not the kind of lady to ask about beauty stuff because um I just, I, I want to spend all my money on Disney stuff, so I don't really spend my money on things like hair and beauty that much, do I? If I can do it myself, I'll do it myself. Um, so funny enough, actually, like last weekend, I got um, a gel nail kit and lamp and everything, so I'm going to do all that myself for holiday this time. The one thing I will do is get my hair cut before I go away. Mm-hmm. That's this week. I'm dying to cut plenty of this off. Um, but other than that, I, I don't have any tips, um, but I will say I do always buy myself new makeup to go away and I always use a fixing spray for my makeup um, because sweat just melts that stuff off straight away. But that, that's about it. Well, so what, what's your beauty tips? I, I think it's for another channel. Oh, okay. I think, I think yeah. Your makeup I, I'll channel. start a male grooming channel. Essentially, I go for the Lord of the Rings look. Um, you just kind of get out of bed and and go really and just yeah. look like you like a, a little bedroom, were you? A little tidy, get the kind of the little stray yeah. 
bits. Okay. But I think I did go, I, I, there was one, I can't remember what year it was, but one where my beard was a lot longer than what it is now. Yeah, oh yeah. And it was so hot and sweaty that it was it was glistening. And I've got a, I've got a photo with Rapunzel. No, no, not, not Ra- Rapunzel, not, Sleeping Beauty. All right, with Sleeping Aurora. Beauty, with Aurora. And... Like, you look a sweaty mess. What movie was it where they had that soul glow? So was it in um, coming, coming to in, in, yeah coming yeah. to America? So it looked like I had like soul glow in my beard. Um, so yeah, so I try to keep it shorter for for dizziness, so it's not so sweat inducing. Yeah. But yeah, and I'll probably be tying my hair up a lot there yeah, as well. I think you will. Okay, next one, uh, kind of for both of us, I guess. So. <laughs> How do you prepare your legs and belly for the holiday? Because I struggle to walk that much and eat that much. It is a challenge. Um, and we do, I guess we do come sort of the start of spring before we go away. We'll proper go into a diet and some sort of exercise. Yeah, thing. so we, we always try to train. So whether it's it's running or we do a lot of like kind of free weights and stuff. But we always do some kind of exercise. Yeah. We, we ramp it up to kind of more three times a week, four times a week in the kind of the run up to holiday, maybe kind of four months beforehand. And we walk a lot because yeah. because we live in Somerset, there's just an abundance of countryside and forests and beaches um, and we have a dog. So walking is something we do all year round anyway. And I think if, if you're not used to walking and you're going to Disney World for the very first time, that you at the very least you should get some some nice long walks in before you go yeah um breaking your shoes yeah we, we always way. take two pairs of like shoes mm. so like a pair of trainers and a pair of vans or something and yeah just make sure they're broken in um i wouldn't recommend i know some people wear them and it's up to you i wouldn't recommend things like flip flops and stuff because it's just uncomfortable hurt your feet I see some really unusual choices of footwear. People that wear kind of like, like women that wear wedges and heels and stuff. It's like you're in Disney. Yeah. Um, in terms of preparing yourself for all that lovely food you're going to eat, I mean, does that require any preparation on your Not part? Not me. No, no, <laughs> just get it in you. Yeah. Well, but the thing is, though, <laughs> it is is when I've got a healthy appetite anyway. But I think even if you don't, is you can. And that, that's the the difference. If you're not used to eating in America, you can get it to to go if you've yeah. got stuff left over and I think it took us quite a while to cotton on to that that you can yeah. actually take the rest of your meal away back to your hotel room and have it later definitely we just don't do that in the UK very much no. yeah. and sometimes you might not want to but yeah, yeah. I think you, you know if you don't eat it all you don't eat it all you've paid for it you've enjoyed it don't force yourself don't be uncomfortable or even just get like your dessert to go I mean you know yeah. unless it's ice cream or something but it, if it's a cake or a cheesecake or something get yeah. it to go and you can put there it in there is an exception fridge. to that what? oh I know so oh, yeah. if you eat a ohana, you will get severe meat sweats. I would say go <laughs> if you if you, if, if you, can you eat a ohana if you're like a vegan or a vegetarian? Oh, I don't know. You might not enjoy it so much. I, yeah, literally uh, ohana. If you're gonna eat there, eat there right at the end of the evening. You know when maybe when the fireworks are on, so you can see the fireworks out of the window from the Polynesian. Yeah. You don't want to be walking anywhere after the Polynesian I just literally to maybe the bus or your Uber or the monorail whatever wherever you're staying but the, you eat so much food blank that they just keep bringing food and <laughs> you just can't so it's all that. like noodles <laughs> and pot stickers and stuff first and the pineapple bread yeah yeah you get the pineapple bread but then the it's just skewer after skewer of barbecued steak chicken I think that pork, was the one meal lamb. where, yeah, pork, shrimps. and the shrimps, if you, if you eat that kind of thing, we don't like seafood. Um, but that's the one meal we had where it hurt after we'd eaten I so wanted, much food. I wanted one of those um, those ECVs afterwards. I didn't want to walk because I wanted to get in one of those <laughs> little cars just to get me to the bus. Yeah. Um, I, I, honestly, and, then you'd always, and then it's the, the banana bread with the caramel ugh, sauce, the, the, the bread pudding. Caramel. Oh. So good. So we put there again. Yeah. We go every time, but it, yeah, you will you will be in pain. It felt like I was in labour. So worth it. So worth it. Okay. Any pre-trip traditions? Um, well, we do the kind of countdown thing on like the the last hundred days down to, to to going away for me is a big deal, and I I probably never stop going on about it at home. I know it annoys you slightly at times. Yeah. But now we're like really close. How many days are we away today? 18. 17. 17. 17, I think. Um, um, it's a bit better now that we're closer. I don't know that we have any 
pre trip tradition. We do have one tradition, which is quite a lot before we go away, and that's when we're exactly one year away from travel day, because usually we go every other year. We have what we call Disney Day in the house, and we have like a, an American style breakfast with pancakes and waffles and bacon and sausage. Oh, and... I thought we did that when we book our dining at 160. No, no, no. Well, no, we did no, this no. year. Yeah, well, maybe we just had an extra celebration this right. year. But we've always had the kind of Disney day. And then we watch Disney movies and just have a chill-out family day together. Um, but the funny thing is, if we're going to be going next year... We're going every year now, so that's it. It's done. Yeah, we're not going to be able to do that because we're probably going to be having our Disney day in Disney World. Well, so we'll, we'll have our Disney day when we book our... We'll have one Disney day when we book our dining reservation mm -hmm. and then we'll have another one when we book our fast passes yeah, so we'll have maybe. two Disney days so yeah that, that, that's probably the only tradition we have yeah okay have you ever got a tattoo whilst in Orlando and if so where um I haven't ever got a tattoo in Orlando all mine have been done in the UK but not the case for you no I did I got a very small one in in atomic tattoo yeah in the Was, Florida in Mall yeah I don't know if they're still there I don't think they are still there are they? I have no idea. I don't know. It was in actually in the Florida mall, um, and what do I? I don't like wearing jewelry. I don't like wearing, especially don't like wearing rings. Um, so I don't wear a wedding ring. So what I wanted to get was a tattoo to replace the wedding ring. So we've still as daft as it is, and we've still got. I've still got um, letters that Hannah used to write me from when we were. Because we're that old. And I don't That's think a long they, time ago. Yeah, yeah it's well, like twenty three years. Well, ago? we met in nineteen ninety six. Yeah. So, and we also lived um, kind of about an hour away from one another, so we didn't see each other every day or as often as we wanted to. And we would actually write letters and post them in the post box to yeah. one another. And so we Old still school. have a bunch of stuff, just really showing our age now. But so, so what I did, I took. Um, Hannah used to sign off her letters with like an H and a star. So I took a photo of that and took that with me. And then I got that tattooed as a wedding ring. I don't know if you can see there, if that works. Um, the funny thing is though, the way she signed it off, it does look a little bit like the Holiday Inn logo. <laughs> does it? So, so people are like, man, you must really love the Holiday Inn. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. Good chain of hotels. So, um, so yeah, so that's the only tattoo. Um, I wouldn't get anything bigger when I'm over there just because I, I think oh, you a, the heat. A nursing a healing with, tattoo. In yeah, the heat. with the heat and, and everything else, it'd be really uncomfortable. Right. And then you can't get in the pools and like with sweating and stuff, there's a chance of getting it infected. I don't, you know, I think if you, if you want to be, if you're going to get a tattoo, you want to take care of it. So I probably wouldn't get one over there. But hey, that's up to you. If you don't sweat and you don't swim, Go for it. Well, maybe you get one done like the day before you go home and then you haven't got it. Yeah, home. yeah. I mean, that's cool. So right at the, the back end. But I think, I mean, that was a small one, so no big deal. But yeah, that's it. Very cool. Uh, next one. Um, okay, the next two kind of go together. So I'll read both questions out and go we on. can cover them off a in one answer. Two for one. What are your favourite places to eat in both Disney and Universal? And do you have any meals or a specific meal that you're most excited about for your upcoming trip? Oh, see, man, see, Disney is hard. Disney is hard. So, so I would say, I would say, restaurant it would be Le Cellier, for me. Le Cellier, Ohana. Oh well, Cellier. if you're having two, um, yeah, I say Le Cellier, but food and wine festival. So you can't all, count the whole I festival can't. as a yeah. meal. Yeah, world showcase, food and wine. <laughs> All the booths. Seriously, just leave me there when it opens at 11 in the morning and I'll just, just come and find me in the evening. I'll be really happy. I'd have had all the foods, all the various craft beers and whatever they do and just find me at the other end and I will be the happiest person you've ever seen. So in terms of a sit-down meal at Disney, is there a particular meal you're most looking forward to when you think about the bookings that we have? Yeah, I mean it, it's 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 Le Cellier. I mean, Ohana, because oh, like Ohana, it's just an experience, and it it does hurt so much, but it's good. But yeah, Le Cellier. I do. You know, I'm looking forward to a couple that we haven't done before. One would be uh, breakfast at Garden Grill. We've had dinner there before, but the breakfast in particular, the 
the I don't know what it's called the bread with all the icing on it oh, that looks so good um but also um did we put yak and yeti in the end no did we not no oh. no because the times were stupid oh I think oh, I don't I can't remember because we've moved them around like we said before oh, we we've have. moved them around so, so many times but so it would be a surprise yeah we've got loads of good ones we've got loads of... no we didn't we moved it to um the the nine dragons oh yeah I'm looking forward to that too. Um, Never done that before. Nine, nine Dragons, if you're on dining plan, it's almost kind of not overly worth it because mm. the food's really cheap. I think the, 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 all the meals, actual appetizers are... Um, Isn't the most expensive one like $19? Yeah, $20. So mm. it's, it's it's almost like counter service. So it's a good tip though. If you want to eat somewhere, sit down cheap. Have a really cash. good, really good kind of like, you know, Chinese takeaway style yeah. meal, you know, your orange chicken and that kind of thing, sweet and salsa. Then... Yeah, Nine Dragon. But that's what we're doing. So, um, Disney aside. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Our favourite place to eat in Universal is probably Kung Fu Panda. Which it's Panda Express. Panda Express, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we've never been massively impressed with food at Universal. No, it always tastes really kind of rubbery and bland and dry and old. And the, the yeah. food in the parks we've just never got along with. I mean, we we ate in the three three room six. Is it three room no, six? the um the leaky cauldron. Yeah, the leaky cauldron. Leaky cauldron's okay. Yeah, yeah, that was okay. That wasn't too bad. But it was um, very British, so it's kind yeah. of just eating. And at the home. portions are small for for what you're getting. Yeah. I mean, eating outside. So we we've eaten at um the chocolate emporium. Tootsum. Tootsum. I enjoyed that. I don't think you did. It was all right. I think I would just order something different. I think I think it was what I ordered was. What did you have? I don't know. It was not memorable. I had a flatbread. It was really good. It it was all right, um, but I think it's mainly obviously you're there for the dessert, really. So mm. you know it, it's the dessert side of the speciality, not the, the the rest of the food. And the 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 meal we had at our hotel. At Lowe's Royal Pacific. That yeah, was all right. That was That's good. pretty good. Um, we eat at. Um, it's not ESPN, NBC, or what's the sports bar Yeah, place? I can't remember what it's called either, but that wasn't too bad. The, 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 in City Wall, just, I can't remember what the sports bar's called. No, I can't either. But that was pretty good, and we had, we had like, the whole, all the meats. But honestly, we like Panda Express, and uh, and, yeah, next, and Kai, that's Kai's favourite. I um, think that's one of the things he's most looking forward to on the trip, is it? it it's inexpensive, <laughs> um, and you get loads of food. And next to it as well, there's that burrito place, which is cool. You're going to try that this time. I love burritos. Yeah. No, I'm just going to have some noodles. Um, so yeah, Universal, not too, I don't know. It depends what you want. And saying that though, we haven't tried many of the restaurants in City Walk. So yeah. in the park, no, not great. Um, Leaky Cauldron is my best experience in the park. But at City Walk, you've got loads of choices, loads of options, depending on what you want. Yeah. Except for the hot dog place. It says it's the world's best hot dog. It is not. A pap. Rubbish. So. Um, okay. I think we've just got a couple more. So, someone yeah. asks, do you set a budget for merch and shopping or do you just go with the flow? Go with the flow. It's dangerous. I think, I think we've done both. I think we have had some like, where we've stuck to a rigid budget. Well, I think that's because we've set a stupidly high budget. I think that's what we've done. We, we, we've, <laughs> we've set crazy budgets. But I, I think for the most part, we go with the flow. What we, We've got better. If you know that you're going every so often so every year every couple of years then there's there's a bit more restraint yeah it's not so urgent to buy all the things because you're never <laughs> going to get there again um but disney are good at bringing out lots of new merch i, I think, think that's the danger this time they've gotten so much better with their merchandise since th we were last there it's think, going to be so hard yeah i mean there's a few tips and tricks you can do so um i would if you if you can if you can work it this way on your kind of second or third day after having a look in the stores in the in the parks is go over to like Vinland's outlet or whatever because yeah. a lot of the time you'll have stuff that's in still current in the parks yeah um in the outlets for like a quarter of the price particularly on clothing um or or you know stupidly priced sometimes um or you might find t-shirts that actually you like more or you know when they're like five five bucks or or ten dollars whatever then yeah it's better than paying 35 dollars so that that's good but you can also just try and think about what you want, whether you want, I want a spirit jersey, I want a couple of pins, or I want a lightsaber, or whatever, two lightsabers. Then you just, you just kind of three lightsabers. You just limit yourself to whatever um, you're going to do. But yeah, is is 
probably just you, you'll go with the flow okay. until bank says no final question this is a fun one i like this one go on if you could have a disney ride in your back garden which would it be and why well first off we need a much bigger garden I don't think you, you. I think there's no Disney attraction you could actually fit in our garden. Barnstormer would squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Um. Oh, you go. Hmm. This is hard. It's fun, but it's can hard. It, can it be a universal ride? Does it have to be a Disney ride? It has to be well, a Disney ride. I'll, I'll give a Disney ride, but I'll also give a universal ride. Okay. But you go. I think I'll put Space Mountain in the garden. Really? Yeah. I mean, like, if only for the fact that it would look epic. It would look well out of place from where we live, but like everyone would know Space Mountain. Uh, and it's fun. Uh, I'm torn. I'm torn between two rides for, from Disney. Mm -hmm. So, one part of, the, part of the Caribbean, because I think you can ride it at any time. Um, and it, I love Pirates of the Caribbean, I, I love it. I love the I love the dark rides. I love the water. But if I think about it, and it's going to be a ride that's there permanently, is would you get really bored of something like Pirates of the Caribbean or Space Mountain if yeah. it's there permanently? You're doing it over and over again, and you just kind of get fed up with it. So um, maybe something that's a bit more relaxed and chilled out that you can just enjoy at whatever time of day. Where are you going with this? And just living with the land. <laughs> But seriously though, because it's it, your garden. It is a garden. It's a garden. It's a garden. So you can sit, you can sit on the boat, you can get some like nice comfy cushions on the boat, take all the seats out, make it a bed. <laughs> well, a bed and a, a seat. And just sit there with with a, a nice kind of like maker's mark or something and a nice cigar and just sit there going around all the plants. And you can change up the plants. Change up the plants. You you're know? just saying this because you're an old man who loves his garden now. But that would be cool. And, but you just sit. It's, it's a boat ride in your garden. Yeah. In your garden. Yeah. It's like garden inception. Okay, now I'm really interested to see what. Uh, so you yeah. Know, so so living with the land. Don't need the dog barking at the beginning there. You can. Well, we can have our dog. We yeah. have a real dog. Yeah. So we can replace the fake dog with our dog who doesn't bark really. Um, yeah, living with the land. So what's your universal one? Come on, obvious. The best ride in the world. It's Forbidden Journey. It's Forbidden Journey. It? I love that ride. I <laughs> don't know if you can get bored of that ride. It is amazing. I love it. Do you just want Hogwarts in our back garden? I want to go to... I want Hogwarts to be real. And I want to go to... I'm, you can't I, go there as a student. You're much too I can old. be... A, I can... I, I sense I could be Hagrid. Or I could... I could be a teacher of some kind of... You could be a bearded Snape. Teacher of the weird arts. Weird arts. Weird, that's, I, that's I, thing, I don't want to do dark it? arts. I could do weird arts. Just weird stuff like circus, like what? weird, like back alley. I don't know. <laughs> back alley arts. Okay. Yeah. Forbidden Journey. Forbidden Journey. Yeah, I mean, if I had to pick a ride from Universal, I think maybe Forbidden Journey oh, too. So good. You're really looking forward to that. you got to get through two weeks of Disney before you get anywhere near that ride though. No, because I'm going to go pick up our uh, annual passes at Universal kind of like at the end of the first week. Um, and I'm going to go for an afternoon. You're saying, I oh, like you're going to go do it by yourself? I, I might. <laughs> I might. And just do laps on Forbidden Journey. Oh, uh, yeah. That sounds fun. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. So there you go. That answers all the questions that we received. And can I have all the booths from Food and Wine around the outside of the garden? So I can, like, walk around and get all the foods. Yeah, why not? I mean, we're shelling out to put Forbidden Journey in the back garden. Well, we I might as well have, have some food a little booths. bit extra. Um, or looking forward to the um, in the American Pavilion the new smokehouse opening. Will that be open when we go? I don't think it will be because it's boarded up at the moment. Ready but they to be will open. have they have the smokehouse booth. Yeah, have the, 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 the brisket so stuff. But I want I want to see I want to try the new because it's only theming. They're not like changing a building or the kitchen. It's literally just a bit of theming. So how long does it take? That's been boarded up for two weeks, mm, three maybe. Oh, hopefully that's open. Anyway, um, I think we're going to leave it there. Yeah, stuff um, to do. We, so we have got two more weekends before we fly away. So that's two more videos. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do subscribe as well. If you just want to stay in touch with everything else we're doing, you can also follow us on Instagram at Charlton's Do Disney. Um, we've got 17 more days on the countdown. 
Not long to go now. See you next week. Bye. Bye.